In an earlier video, we talked about the concept of R-squared in a bivariate regression model. In this video, we're going to build on that and talk about how we may want to adjust the concept of R-squared when we have more than one independent variable. In this discussion, we're going to assume that you're familiar with the basic concept of R-squared, and you may wish to review that earlier video if you need to refresh your understanding of that concept. To measure R-squared, we can start with the basic measure that we talked about in that earlier video. In this equation, the total sum of squares refers to the total sum of square deviations of y from its mean. The next term, the RSS, is the regression sum of squares, which is that component of the sum of square deviations of y from its mean that can be explained by knowing the regression equation. The last term is the error sum of squares, which is just the sum of squared error terms around the regression equation. We define r squared to be the ratio of the regression sum of squares to the total sum of squares, or equivalently, 1 minus the ratio of the error sum of squares to the total sum of squares. In general, it's simplest to think of r squared as the proportion of the variation in the dependent variable that can be explained by the regression model. We know, given the definitions of these, and so they're all sum of squared terms, they're all going to be non-negative, and as a result, r squared will always be greater than or equal to zero, and will always be less than or equal to one. If r squared is equal to zero, it means the regression explains absolutely none of the variation in the dependent variable, and r squared of one means that the regression equation accounts for all of the variation in the dependent variable, and there are no error terms, so all the points would fit exactly along the regression equation. Things become a little bit different, though, when we consider what happens when the number of variables change. As we've discussed in earlier videos, as we add additional variables, the degrees of freedom for the regression fall. What that means in practice is that adding additional variables to the regression will always tend to result in an increase in R-squared, even if there's no causal relationship between the added variables and the dependent variable. Consider, for example, a bivariate regression relationship. If you only have two observations, you will always be able to get an R-squared of one, because you can always draw a line that will go through two points with no error terms. If we have three variables, we can always exactly fit a relationship in three-dimensional space. Similarly, if we have a relationship between a dependent variable and nine independent variables, so we'd have 10 terms we're estimating, including the constant term, if we had 10 data points, the R-squared will always equal one. What will always happen is that R-squared will equal one when the number of estimated intercept and slope parameters equals the number of observations. So as you add more and more variables to the equation, you're going to start approaching an R-squared of 1. That's probably not the best way to test for the strength of a relationship between your dependent variable and your independent variables. So what a number of economists had done is come up with measures of adjusted R-squared. The most common measure is this one, which was originally suggested by Henry Tile, I believe. And the adjusted R-squared measure, which is represented by R-squared with a bar over the top, or R-bar squared, is defined not as 1 minus ESS over TSS, as the standard R-squared is measured, but you divide ESS and TSS respectively by the respective degrees of freedom for those two terms. If the number of observations is large, that's going to be very close to R-squared, because the difference between n minus 1 and n minus a quantity k plus 1 will be relatively small when n is large relative to k. But what happens in small samples particularly, we're adding a penalty there, where the number of variables included in the regression, k, rises. If we look at that numerator ratio, the denominator of the numerator ratio will change. In particular, as k goes up, the quantity n minus k plus 1 will go down. And if the denominator of that numerator ratio goes down in size, the numerator itself is going to be larger. 
So an increase in k will make the last term in that definition larger. And when we take 1 minus that, it means that r squared is going to be reduced as the number of variables in the regression rises. So essentially what this adjustment does is it adds a penalty for including additional variables. And roughly speaking, what's happening is that a new variable will increase adjusted r squared only if it adds more to the ability to explain the dependent variable than would be accounted for by the reduction in degrees of freedom that occurs when you add more variables. In general, econometricians tend to report primarily the adjusted r squared with multiple regression models, either as the only measure of r squared or perhaps along with r squared when reporting regression results.